Movies based on true stories often take considerable creative license, but one specific choice to shuffle the facts in Gran Turismo has some critics waving red flags. The Gran Turismo video games don't have much of a story to adapt to a feature-length film, so Sony's new movie of the same name draws from real-life experiences. The story of Jan Mardenborough draws from the racer's actual journey from religiously playing the Gran Turismo games to taking his skills to the racetrack. As with many biopics, some details are accurate, while others are fictionalized or exaggerated to create a more compelling narrative. And one moment in Gran Turismo may have some viewers wondering what the real story is. During one of the movie's pivotal races, Yan attempts to get ahead of the competition, but in the process, he loses control of his vehicle, which careens into a crowd of spectators. Yan is told it was a freak accident and wasn't his fault, but in the hospital it's revealed the collision resulted in a person's death. It serves as the lowest point of the character's journey, and he questions whether he wants to continue racing. That accident actually did happen in 2015 at the Nürburgring. Nissan, the team for which Martin Burrow drove, issued a statement following the incident that read in part, Several spectators were injured in the incident, and despite immediate efforts, one of them succumbed to their injuries. The others have been taken immediately to hospital for care. In the movie, trainer Jack Salter pushes Yan to get back behind the wheel in time for the 24 hours of Le Mans to prove he has what it takes to race alongside the best. I'm not sure if I can do this. Most people can't. I got a feeling you're not most people. Through sheer determination and will, Yan manages to place third. He overcomes adversity and kicks off an incredible racing career. The only problem is that things didn't happen in that order in real life. Martin Burrow's accident took place in 2015. The 24 Hours of Le Mans race, where Yan triumphantly came in third, occurred in 2013, a full two years before the crash. The movie alters the timeline of events so that Yan could have his lowest moment come before he took the podium. The movie version of Yan is directly impacted by the accident during the 24 hours of Le Mans. He witnesses another racer crash, and this impedes his performance until he can shake out of it. It paints the two events as connected, when in real life, they didn't really have anything to do with one another. It's normal for biopics to alter events to construct a more compelling story that better aligns with dramatic character arcs, but plenty of critics have taken the film to task for changing details about a moment that resulted in a real person losing their life. The movie's already facing an uphill battle from reviewers for a formulaic story, and some have directly addressed how the timeline change comes across as insensitive. Ollie Welsh wrote for Polygon, While the crash did happen pretty much as depicted, Jason Hall and Zach Balin's screenplay time shifts it in order to stage it as a defining, motivating setback on Martin Burroughs' hero's journey to his Le Mans podium. The actual accident happened years later, arguably a tasteless reframing of a fatal event. Others have mentioned how it seems crass to frame a person's death as being integral to Martin Burroughs' journey when it didn't really help him at Le Mans. In an interview with Driving.co.uk, Martin Burrow discussed the importance of including the accident in the film, saying, I feel it would have been a disservice for the audience for that not to be in there. He didn't mention altering the timeline, so audiences can decide whether it feels tasteless or not when Gran Turismo gets a limited release on August 11th before opening wide on August 25th.